I found these four vintage Haywood Wakefield dining chairs on Facebook Marketplace for just $100, and they're perfect for my dining room makeover. Let's get to flipping. A few weeks back, I refinished a dining room table for our own dining room upstairs, and I was lacking chairs. But when I was putting on the top coat, Neiman sent me a Facebook link, and it had these four Haywood Wakefield chairs on it. So we are gonna take these drabby, really run down, but really nice quality chairs, and turn them into something that is gonna go well in our dining room, and something that we can keep for years to come. My hope is that by the end of this video, you guys see that it's not always necessary to buy brand new furniture. If you just put a little bit of work in, something can come out much better in the end. First thing that I am going to do is go ahead and take the cushions off so that I can first tackle the legs and the back and get going on cleaning up everything. Looks like these have been reupholstered at least once before and this doesn't even look original. Definitely gonna be reupholstering these because this fabric has seen better days. We're gonna start with cleaning and I've got my Simple Green. I do dilute a concentrate of Simple Green, that way I can put it in this bottle and spray it super easy. It, all the directions are on a bottle of the concentrate. Um, so I'm just gonna spray it on and then wipe everything back. There is a lot of gunk on these, uh, so I don't know that I'll get all of it off. I'll do my best, but I am gonna be sanding down all of the surface, so it's not gonna be a huge deal if I can't get uh, like some food chunks and stuff off. Kind of gross. <laughs> Okay, cleaning is done, at least round one of cleaning. So I'm trying to decide if I want to dismantle these chairs or not. I know I'm not gonna take these off of the top piece here because um, they are like, the, where the screws are, they're filled in with wood pieces and I don't want to even attempt to do that, not in my wheelhouse. But if you turn it around, there are some screws down here that I could unscrew and that way when I am stripping off the finish, I could get into these grooves really well. So I think it would do me well to go ahead and dismantle them, kind of label them so that I know which chairs they go back to and which pieces belong together. All right, got them apart and I am glad I did because there is a whole bunch of gunk, food, who knows what in between the creases. So that'll definitely need to be cleaned as well. I think, this is gonna stay one piece. And then I might as well go ahead and take these legs off as well. Well, maybe not though, because they're like doweled in. I would have to take these off. I think this one. I think these are glued in. I think I'm gonna leave this as one piece as well. So each chair will just be broken down to two pieces. And there is a missing screw here to hold this chair, this leg tight. So I will need to put a screw in there, but that can be done a little bit later. I'm gonna go ahead and dismantle the other three chairs as well. I got all the chairs dismantled. Now I'm just taking off these sticky rubber things, felt bottoms that are on the bottoms of the front only, it seems like. Um, I just want to start fresh and new. I was going to replace them all because I honestly thought that some of them were felt and some of them were the plastic ones that were original, but I'm finding out now that they are actually all original on there and for some reason 
The former owner put felt pads on them, but I'll just trash those and we'll be good with these little floor savers. So next I am going to go ahead and break out my sander and see how tough this finish is. Next thing I'm looking for is a workbench because I don't have a workbench. I need a workbench that's like mobile. So I'm gonna be on the lookout on Facebook Marketplace. But that's besides the point. I am going to get to sanding these. I've got my surf prep sander three by four here connected to my dust extractor, which I'm also using as a temporary table. It works. I've got an 80 grit sandpaper because we are going to work on sanding through this finish. If it's kind of tough, I do have some stripper that I'm going to try, but I want to see if it's, you know, going to take a long time with the sander at first. All right, this right here to get it to this state took me 16 minutes just sanding with 80 grit. And I also used three sanding pads. So not too bad. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the other half of this chair as well. And then we'll kind of reassess and see if I wanna try stripping or stick with sanding. I got myself a table. So happy. This is awesome. Uh, I couldn't basically handle it anymore. I didn't want to do it on my legs and that wasn't really working out. So I went and grabbed myself a work table. It's been a long time coming, I think, because I've gone almost three years of doing this without any sort of work table. Actually, it's been three years. So just a little investment to the garage. It goes up and down as well. We got it at Home Depot. It's the Husky brand and it's super nice. Um, and it's also on wheels. So you can like lock the wheels and stuff. All right, enough talking. We are going to get to sanding the rest of the chairs with 80 grit. Now that everything is sanded, and I did start with an 80 grit, but then I worked my way up to 120 grit and then up to 220, you wanna do that to reduce any swirl marks that you may get in your wood because the 80 grit is super, super coarse. And so sometimes you may get some swirls in your wood, but you need to use that coarse to get the stain off. But then that is why it's important to then smooth everything out and kind of work your way up to some finer grits of sandpaper. Now that that is all done and I've gotten into all the intricate details, I need to wipe wipe back the, the dust that was created from all of that sanding, which there is quite a bit of dust on these. And before I put the stain on it, I just really want to make sure that all of the parts and pieces are nice and clean. All right, everything nice and wiped back. I am gonna be using the same stain that I used on my dining table because I really want them to be cohesive even though they're from two different sets. We can kind of join them together by using similar colors or the same color. So I am gonna be using Lily Moon Paints Gel Stain. It's a smoky gel stain in the color Tennessee Whiskey. It's water-based so it's super easy to apply. I do like to wear gloves just to keep it from getting on my hands and then um, I'll just apply it with a chip brush and I'll wipe it back with a microfiber cloth. And I can't forget my mister bottle because that is definitely an important thing to have on hand when you are using the water-based gel stain. It just really helps you um, drag the material across the surfaces without it drying up too quickly. 
What I like to do is start by spraying my surface. And then I want to give this a nice shake. Make sure everything is just combined as it should be mixed really well. Especially if it's been sitting a while, just chances are it tends to separate, which is just normal with any type of product like this. And then apply some. And once I've got it all applied like that, there is excess. And so after letting it kind of just sit on there a bit, I'll wipe it back with either a lint-free cloth or a microfiber cloth, whichever one you have on hand. I usually use lint-free, but the, I was out of them, so microfiber cloth will, will do the same thing. So this is gonna be a pretty tedious process. This is the exact same thing I'm gonna be doing on all four chairs both parts of all four chairs and then I'll show you guys the end result. All right, we've got our first part done here. You'll notice it is a bit blotchy, but keep in mind, I sprayed it with quite a bit of water and the product has to dry. So I'm gonna put this out in the sun to dry and we're gonna move on to some more pieces. chairs are drying, I am going to work on the cushions. First things first, we need to get this blue fabric off. I first maybe thought I was going to keep them, but after further looking, it's just not really the material that I want. And it's very pilled and there's lots of, um, I don't know, like remnants from other fabrics and dust and things like that. They just basically need to be redone. And I want it to encapsulate our whole area since our dining room and our living room basically are in the same room. It's important to me that they sort of are really cohesive. So I've got my little staple remover here that I love to use on my vintage velvet chairs to rip the skirts off. It serves as a dual purpose and I'm going to remove the staples on all four of these cushions. I kind of like that fabric. Dang, I already got some other fabric. Is it clean? It looks clean. I mean, I gotta look at all of them, but... Wouldn't that be great if I could just use this fabric that was underneath, because this is the color of the table, basically the legs that I did, and then the yellow was the color I was trying to tie in from our media center that's in our living room. And then these two colors honestly kind of tie in the rug that is under the kitchen table. Maybe I'll get lucky and all three of these ones will be nice and shaped too. All right, I had to come see it in the space really quick, see if it would even make sense. So the blue ties in really well with that blue. I think it really complements the rug a lot. It's got some of the same tones in it like this pinkish color with the salmon-y color of the rug, and even this darker blue as well in these spots. And then that greenish color that's pretty faint on the cushions is right here in the rug. And then the yellow ties in over here with the entertainment center. It's not exact, but I mean, pretty close. And it's gonna be so far away that it doesn't really matter if it's like exactly, exactly on point. So if we have these chairs right there, I don't know. 
Ah, oh, I was really loving the fabric that I chose though. I went to Joann's and I picked out some fabric that I really liked, but I wasn't too sure how it was going to go well, go with the rug that I have under here. So let's go take off the blue of the other cushions and see what's underneath them. All right, three for three on them looking pretty good underneath that blue. All right, here's number four. I'm gonna do a once over because I'm seeing a few, like, I guess they would be some type of sweat stain or food stain that seeped through the blue into this. And so I kind of want to see if I could maybe get some of them out. This is the one that's honestly the worst. So if I can do that, I think we may just salvage these and stick with these covers. But I did go to Joann's and I found some fabrics that I really liked. I ended up choosing this fabric and it is super, super pretty. It is a bit more, like, I guess, sophisticated, more modern than this fabric is, but I was a little bit hesitant on how it actually would look with the rug that is underneath the table. So now I've just gotta make some decisions. What would you guys choose? Do we like the flowers or the more, like, aztec -y, design. Let me know down below in the comments and I'll decide. I'm using Folex and I got it on Amazon. I've used it before on carpet because technically it's a carpet spot remover. One time Neiman flung pizza sauce across the whole entire white carpet I just bought brand new. I don't even eat pizza. And this saved our life. I wiped it up and then sprayed this for a couple of days and I didn't even have to vacuum or anything. I just kept kind of going back to that spot, spraying some more, wiping it, and it honestly was a miracle worker. So maybe it will get some of these stains out or at least like a little bit, like make them a little bit more faint, I guess. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray the whole thing. I'm always trying to do something in between dry time. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put these chairs back together while the fabric dries out and we see if that method is going to work. I wanted to take them apart while I was staining so that I could get into all the nooks and crannies. Now I'm gonna put them back together before I do the top coat so that I can just do a straight up top coat on all four chairs. I think we have a winner, you guys. It's not only gonna save time, but it also just matches so well up there. So the, the combination of the Folex plus sitting them in the sun to dry and just kind of melt away all the germs, they are honestly like good as new, which is awesome. So the last thing that I have to do is top coat these and screw in the seats. All right, so for the top coat, I went ahead and set up the spray tent, which is just the easiest way to contain any overspray. We like to have our vehicles in the driveway and this really helps contain that so none of the product gets on the vehicles or really anywhere else in our surrounding area. So I'm gonna spray the top coat. I'm gonna use Dixie Bell's Clear Satin Top Coat and I'm gonna go ahead and strain it into my spray gun so I can avoid any clumping or clogging through the straw as the sprayer works.
All right, I am ready to do top coat number two on all four chairs. All right, it is time to put these seats back on. After a couple of coats of top coat, everything is nice and sealed and protected. So I am deciding officially to go with the aztec -y looking pattern that was underneath the blue. It's gonna save me some time, but then after putting it up in the room and looking at the floral and this pattern, I just really liked the way that this looked when I came around the corner. It's kind of eye-catching, but yet it blends in really nicely as well with the surrounding colors. So I'm gonna put all the screws back where I got them and we'll take these guys upstairs. There we have it. All right, guys, everything is finished up with the dining area. Well, at least for the table and chairs. I am super glad that this fabric underneath the blue worked out because it totally goes with the theme. Like I keep saying, it was just meant to be. We struck gold in this flip and it really saved me some time from having to reupholster, which is really not my favorite thing to do anyway. I also kind of just realized that our plates, our dishes, tie right in with the whole look of the vibe and I didn't really even mean to do that. So that's kind of a happy coincidence that happened as well. This room is by no means done. I think when you're living in a space, it's important to be able to be flexible and ever changing. So there's a whole blank wall over here. Neiman and I would love to get some type of credenza or a record player that we could refinish and play records over here. I think that would be a really fun feature feature in this house. So more videos to come, but if you're interested in flipping furniture, we've got a coaching program that we would love for you to be a part of, and you can learn how to flip furniture just like this, but also earn a profit while doing so. All the links are down below in the description if you want more information on that. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next week, and we'll see you on the flip side.